Starting pitching has been a key ingredient to the Astros' success at Minute Maid Park this season. Tonight, Jay Happ goes for his second straight home win. It's the Astros and the Cubs next on Fox Sports Houston. Fox Sports Houston brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight is game two of a three-game series. The Astros meeting the Chicago Cubs. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown and Jim Deshays. The Astros won it last night to open their series with the Cubs. They're four and two on the homestand, J.D. Yeah, three home runs uh, for the Astros last night. Chris Johnson hit a bomb. Jason Castro hit his first. And Jed Lowry with yet another home run. Jed Lowry doing very good things for the Astros. Uh, in this batting order this year, hitting 290, that's the ninth best in Major League Baseball. Seven home runs tied for third. His home run rate, home runs per at bat, leads all Major League shortstops. 367 on base, 18 RBIs. Down the list offensively, he's among the best. He's on a pace to hit 27 home runs, which would be an Astro record for home runs by a shortstop. Coming up as Jay Happ takes the mound for the Astros against the Chicago Cubs and their left-hander, Travis Wood. The Astros hope to keep the run of good starting pitching going. Bud Norris came up with a gem last night. We'll see Happ against the Cubs in just a moment. by the Progressive Insurance Group for a money-saving car insurance quote. Call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE today. It's the Astros and the Cubs. Game two of their three-game set. Jay Happ on the mound facing the Cubs for only the third time. To tell you more about that, the lineups and more, let's go to the booth. Bill Brown and Jim Deshaies. Thank you, Greg Lucas. And it is the second game of this series. And the starting lineup for the Cubs brought to you by Hyundai. David DeJesus right field. Reed Johnson center field. 
Starlin Castro shortstop, Alfonso Soriano left field. Joe Mather, the third baseman tonight, bats fifth, followed by Jeff Baker at first base, Darwin Barney at second. Blake Lolly makes his first major league start at catcher, and it's Travis Wood on the mound. OJ Happ goes to the bump tonight. Uh, has to be feeling pretty good about his effort last time out. Six scoreless innings, scattered seven hits, walked one. Struck out four. That coming after a couple of rocky outings, so a solid bounce back start for Jay. Last time he gets the brew crew defensively. Schaefer back in there in center. He's got Maxwell on one side, Martinez on the other. Third to first on the infield. CJ Lowry, Altuve, Lee. Chris Snyder is the catcher. Half 0 and 1 lifetime against Chicago in two starts with an ERA of nine facing De Jesus. David at 282 has 149 at bats with those numbers. Taking ball one. Chris Cuccioni is the home plate umpire. De Jesus was the leadoff man last night. He was on base three times. Two hits, an RBI, and a walk for David. Former infielders in tight as Hap delivers a strike to even the count at one and one. Last time Jay shot out Milwaukee for six innings. Walking one, fanning four, and a four nothing win on Thursday. And his problems this year have come early in games, some first inning issues. That was not the case last time out. His fastball command was very good right from the get go, and he also had a good breaking pitch. There's the breakdown. It's been an up and down year for him. Three and three ERA, just a little below five now. Breaking pitch missing brings the count to two and two on to Jesus. The Cubs are 14th in runs scored in the National League. They had some late rallies last night. Only had four in the ninth inning to lose eight four. Foul back. They had some traffic on earlier. Couldn't take advantage of anything until the ninth. They wound up with 11 hits, though. They out hit the Astros 11 to 8, and Houston won at 8 to 4. De Jesus, formerly with Kansas City and Oakland, moving in to be the Cubs' leadoff man this season after signing a two year deal as a free agent. Good contact hitter, career 284 batting average for David. Slashes that one through the left side. And he's aboard to open this game. And that's his game right there. Try to get on top of the ball, hit line drives. He's not a power guy at all. Dale Swain leaning to the right with his lineup tonight, as you would expect with a left handed pitcher on the mound, but the left handed hitting DeJesus stays in there and it pays off. DeJesus has not stolen a base. He's been caught four times. Reed Johnson's the number two man. Looking down at his third base coach. Pat Listash, who lives in Houston, 224 for Reed, one homer, eight runs batted in. A platoon type player who hit 309 for the Cubs last year in 246 at bats. Chris Johnson in on the grass. Reed Johnson takes strike one. Reed got a hit and drove in a run in last night's game. Five of his last 11 hits have gone for extra bases. This is his 11th start of the year. Tony Campana was a starting center fielder last night. He bats left. Johnson with a one hopper to Chris Johnson. He fires to second. Altuve on to first, and it's out of the glove of Carlos Lee. Altuve is down, but he's getting up. Now he was under severe pressure from De Jesus. He took a hit. And he winces as he's helped up by Lowry. And yeah, an awkward throw, a play here as this throw is high into the inside for Altuve. CJ trying to be quick to get the double play and a little bit of an errant throw makes it problematic for Altuve over there at second base. He's up in the air, actually could have been called safe as that throw pulled him off the bag. Yes, there was catch a break on the call there from Jeff Nelson, the second base umpire. Boy, Down and really then back up again. He got up, ended. Got the wind knocked out of him. Starlin Castro, the 22 year old shortstop at 316 with two homers, 25 runs batted in. Comes up with a 326 on base average. Fifth in the league in hits with 54. 
Take a strike one. He had a couple of hits last night. Take one more look at this play. CJ unloads in a hurry. And good hard slide there by De Jesus. Carlos trying to catch and tag. Can't hang on. Could have been a double play had he been able to do that. Now the second baseman or middle infielder so vulnerable on that type of play with the runner bearing down on him. Mark Ellis has gone out with an injury on a double play attempt and he'll be out for weeks. Dodgers second baseman and he was right in front of the bag when the runner slid into him and had to go to the hospital. It didn't look all that bad at the time but the doctor later said if he had been about five or six hours later arriving at the hospital he might have lost his leg. Half delivers and Castro looks at it. One ball one strike. Cubs hitting 225 against left handed pitching this year. They've hit a grand total of one home run against South Boss. On base plus slugging of 587, dead last in the league. Castro takes a strike. One and two. Castro enormously talented. Rudy Hotermio is a hitting coach. He was the Astros hitting coach back in the early 90s. And he has worked with some terrific specimens also with the uh, Texas Rangers. The likes of Ruben Sierra. Judge Rodriguez, Juan Gonzalez. A Rod. Yeah. Castro's down on strikes. Two outs for Jay Happ. Soriano comes up. Castro, good eye hand coordination, usually able to put the ball in play, but fooled by that breaking pitch from Happ. Soriano 0 for 3 last night, 264 for the season with three homers, has driven in 22. There's strike one to Soriano, the veteran outfielder. Began his career in the Yankee organization, was traded to Texas in the A Rod deal, and then on to Washington before signing an eight year deal as a free agent with the Cubs. Prior to the 08 season. About two years into that deal, the Cubs started regretting it. <laughs> 0 and 2. Now they have still a couple of years left after this one on that deal. He's hit 227 against Southpaws. Only Soriano, Andre Dawson, and Hack Wilson are Cubs who have hit 20 homers or more each of their first five seasons with the Cubs. It's one and two. Soriano's hit 54 career leadoff homers. But now in the number four spot in the order in this game tonight. Alfonso's hit 343 long balls in his career. Loops that one out of play. Maybe had his best year the year before joining the Cubs. He was a Washington National at a 9 11 OPS, 46 home runs, drove in 95, and he stole 41 bases. That was amazing. That'll get you a big contract. And a huge ballpark. He's down on strikes. No runs are hitting a man left. Jay Happ puts up a zero against the Cubs in the first.
Justin Maxwell right field Carlos Lee first base J.D. Martinez left field Chris Johnson third base Chris Snyder catcher Jordan Schaefer center fielder Jay half pitcher. Well for the Cubs tonight it's uh, Travis Wood he made a start against the Dodgers back on May 6 and was sent back down to triple A Iowa now comes back after seven starts there where he was three and three with a 457 ERA six and six last year. For the Cincinnati Reds, outfield features Soriano, Johnson, De Jesus, Mather, Castro, Barney, Baker on the infield for the Cubs tonight. Blake Lolly making his first career start behind the plate. He becomes the fifth Cubs catcher this year already. Wow. Jose Altuve looks at ball one. Altuve, a 310 hitter with two homers, has 13 runs batted in. Last night he was 0 for 4, did not reach base. 49 hits for Altuve in the top 10 in the league. One ball, one strike. You mentioned all the different catchers, and they had another one who went on the disabled list today, Wellington Castillo. That made room for Travis Wood on this roster for tonight's game. Rumor has it they sent out an APB for Hector Villanueva. <laughs> Fly ball, that smack. Back into left center field. Johnson on the run. Johnson looking up at the wall. Jose Altuve has hit it out. A leadoff homer. Number three of the season, Altuve quickly makes it 1 0 Houston. My goodness. Paul Snyder must be serving spinach down there in the pregame spread. <laughs> Power bats have broken out in a big way here the last handful of ball games. Three home runs Saturday, three home runs yesterday, and now Altuve goes. Not just deep, but big man deep. Oh, yes. Way back there. Hmm. He got out onto that front leg with all kinds of power. Welcome back to the big leagues, Travis Wood. <laughs> Jed Lowry takes ball one. That's the first leadoff homer by an Astro since Jordan Schaefer connected against Jamie Moyer of Colorado back on the 17th of April. Jed Lowry, during his six game hitting streak, has been hitting home runs as well. He hit one last night. He smokes this ball into the right field corner. And that one hops and goes out of play. There's a double for Lowry in a seven game hitting streak. Double number seven for Jed. He'd hit 364 during the last six games. And he just, even his outs have been hard lately. Getting it done from both sides of the plate, too. He came into this season a very low batting average as a left handed hitter, but he's been outstanding from both sides of the plate now as a right handed hitter. He drives this ball into the corner. Should not have been ruled out of play. And didn't touch it, I don't believe. Looked like the second base umpire made that call, Jeff Nelson. Runner at second for Justin Maxwell, 222 for J Max, two homers. He's driven in eight. I guess if it bounces up and it's a foul pole, it's out of play. Yeah. That's what it was. That's what happened. I got it right. Strike one. There it is. Slicing line drive and then up yep. off the screen. Mm hmm. Over the wall. Well, that's actually the first base umpire in that shot, Tim Cheetah, and he's the crew chief. They both may have made that at the same time. What goes change up, change up here to start Maxwell after getting ambushed by Altuve and Lowry. It's fastball, slider, cut fastball, curveball, and change up from Wood. His fastball sits around 90 miles an hour. He'll throw a two seamer, four seamer, and as I mentioned, he likes to try to cut it in on right handed hitters. Change up. He's an effective weapon for him against righties. Misses there and it's two and one. He has been good against the Astros. One and one lifetime, but he's had some excellent starts. In fact, a total of five starts. And in four of those, he's gone at least six innings. The other one was five shutout innings. Last year against the Astros, he was 1 0 with a 1.02 ERA and three starts. Six and two thirds scoreless in this ballpark back on May 9th of last season. Yeah, he won that game 6 to 1. Maxwell fouls it back 3 and 2 to Justin. 
This is the 35th different lineup for Brad Mills. Game number 43 of the year. He said, "Well, I'd like to settle with a certain group, but uh, we're just trying different combinations now to try to maximize the personnel we have against the various pitchers we're facing." He chased it and he struck out. Yeah, you know, if you got a lineup like that one we just saw <clears throat> with the Rangers in town, you just kind of pencil those guys in every night. But the Astros don't have that kind of club. Jeff Luno is a member of the ticket department tonight. No, just kidding. He's taking tickets and he's also going to be ushering in a oh, uh, game day type approach. Is he on undercover boss or something? Uh, not really, but same, it's part of the uh, idea. Part of the fan experience here. Fan friendly initiatives. Carlos Lee, the batter. Ball one to El Caballo, batting average 300. Now Jeff is up there, but I think he's going to be circulating some more during the game. And uh, he does like to meet the fans. JD Martinez on deck. Wood missing away again goes to two balls, no strikes on Lee. Carlos is two for ten lifetime against Travis Wood. Carlos had a couple more hits last night, drove in a run, and scored one. To jump up to that 300 batting average, he came up five points last night. Now he's ahead in the count, three balls, no strikes. Travis Wood, 25 years old from Little Rock, Arkansas. Second round pick of the Reds in 05, traded to the Cubs last December in a multi player deal. Sean Marshall went the other way. 3 1 now. Travis has 11 major league wins and 10 losses. His last start was against Salt Lake City. He won that one 7 to 5, giving up five hits, two runs, and seven innings. Brings that one in for a strike, and it's 3 2 to Carlos Lee. Cubs got quite an effort. From their reliever Randy Wells last night. He went five innings in relief of Matt Garza, the loser. Wells gave up one run. That saved everybody else in their bullpen for this game tonight. Carlos Browns to Darwin Barney. Barney over to Baker. That's out number two. Lowry advancing to third for J.D. Martinez. Martinez with a 216 average, three homers, 21 runs batted in, trying to get it revved up again. He's fallen upon very hard times in the month of May. JD's a 106 hitter in May, no homers, two runs batted in, five hits and 47 at bats. Taking ball one with Chris Johnson to follow. Astros are seventh in the National League and run scored 175. Their opponents have scored 168. It's 2 0. Oh. Yeah. Well, good start for JD in April 282, three home runs, 19 driven in. And you see the numbers there for May. Last year when he first came up, he started very well and then cooled off, but nothing like this. That went back and it's a 2 1 count. And it's interesting because at times people compare JD's his look, his approach, stance at the plate to Albert Pujols. And so Pujols goes in the tank and boom, JD goes right along with him. <laughs> that kind of association he can do without this year. A lot of room to the shortstops left between Castro and the bag for Martinez. And it's a 3 1 count now. Cubs do a lot of shifting on the infield. They do not play double play depth. In a typical double play situation, they do not move their middle infielders into double play depth. You ever heard of that? I never have. Pretty radical. I find it interesting. It see, is interesting. Way I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. We'll see if it happens here. It's going to happen at some point tonight. 
Their skipper Dale Swain will be away tomorrow night for his son's high school graduation. In Arizona. That's strike three and that ends the first Altuve rocked wood with a leadoff homer number three of the season. And Lowry followed with a double but he was stranded and it's one to nothing Houston after one. For flashback Friday, June 1st, Astro great J.R. Richard will toss the ceremonial first pitch. Fans can also enjoy Friday night fireworks presented by Marathon Oil Corporation. So root now and buy tickets for flashback Fridays at Astros.com. Thanks, Greg. There's the rainbow. Somewhere over the rainbow. There is strike one for Jay Happ to Joe Mather. 255 for Mather. Three homers. Eight runs batted in. Playing third base tonight. He's an 080 lifetime hitter against the Astros. He has pretty good numbers, kind of compelling numbers that would uh, make a lot of people understand why he is in that lineup tonight for Dale Swain with a slumping offensive team. Ian Stewart has played third most of the games this year and started there last night. Mather came from the Cardinal organization. It's this one to the left side. Chris Johnson playing it. Getting it. Right now. Jeff Baker will be next. He was named home run Baker in Colorado. Came from Clemson University and. In 08 he hit 12 homers and 299 at bats. That's good production. 200 this season without a homer and three runs batted in. Baker's 30 years old. Half delivers strike one to him. Baker's three for five against half in his career. He delivers and it's 0 and 2. That's one of those nicknames that's like a given. If your name is Baker, they're going to call you a home run back. <laughs> Frank Baker, back in the early, early days of baseball, was the original home run Baker because he was one of the most prolific home run hitters of his day, but he didn't hit many. Nobody was hitting many home runs. Hey, he hit like 12, <laughs> led the league. <laughs> so, well, Jeff hit 12 a few years ago. That's right, the Frank Baker realm. Top foul, 0 and 2. The Astros starters are 14 and 14 now. Their ERA has been coming down. 3.82 for the starting rotation for the Astros. Very good at home. 
Hap at home is three and two with a 430 earned run average. And in Jay's career at Minute Maid Park, his record's 12 and 9 with a 4.05. Like last time out, in command early, he's thrown 25 pitches, 20 for strikes. Rounder up the middle. Baker gets a hit to center field, hit number two for the Cubs. Dave McKay welcomes a customer at first, and it's Darwin Barney at the plate. Tony La Russa retiring and his coaching staff spreading here and there. It's like the Beatles have broken up. I mean, Dave <laughs> McKay was with Tony La Russa forever. Yeah, he was. Barney at 273 wields the bad well. Not a power hitter, but he knows how to move that ball around the field. There's strike one to Barney. He had a seven game hitting streak that was snapped when he went 0 for 2 off the bench on Sunday. He had an uncle, Darwan. Darwin, D A R W O N. <laughs> so he was named after his uncle, kind of. Okay. His mom or dad, I'm not sure which, didn't like the O part of it, so he went to Darwin with an I. Okay. It has nothing to do with evolution or anything like that. Really? One of those families, they have a bunch of D names, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, he was born in Portland, Oregon. Went to Oregon State. Was on the 07 College World Series champs. Fouls it back. One and two. To Darwin Barney. B Baker uh, was a hero at Clemson in the College World Series. I don't know if they won a national championship or not, but I remember him being a big stud there at Omaha. Okay. Baker was their all-time home run leader at Clemson. More than even Denny Walling. More than Denny Walling. Bill Spires. More than Bill Spires. That's prodigious. Two balls, two strikes. Hap faced the Cubs once last year. It was in Houston at the end of the season. He gave up seven earned runs in three innings. Walked five and allowed a grand slam to Aramis Ramirez in that forgettable outing for Jay. That's fouled away. Cubs go on to Pittsburgh on this six game road trip. The Astros have a day off Thursday. They'll leave on that day off for Los Angeles. Go to L.A. for the weekend. Well Dale Swain's club moves on to Pittsburgh and Dale will rejoin the club there. After he misses tomorrow night and Jamie Quirk the bench coach who's on the other side there of Dale will take over the reins tomorrow night. Brown ball wide of third. Keeps the count at two and two. Congratulations. What a John Cleese look alike contest and then got a foul ball on the same day. You see the fan uh, last night? It caught back to back home run balls? Yes, Cincinnati. Unbelievable. It really was. He was out there in left center field. And he got two in a row. Go buy lottery tickets tonight. You know it. Fly ball to center. Schaefer backing. Two outs. Happeth has thrown strike one to six of the first seven batters. Now it'll be Lolly batting. And Lolly came up with his first major league hit, drove in a couple of runs with it last night. Getting his first start as the catcher. Have you noticed that the Cubs' battery tonight is Lollywood? No. Yeah. Like Lolly, Travis Wood, Lollywood. Lollywood. Blake is 29 years old from Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. He went to Gardner Webb University. Played at Double A Tennessee last year. Yeah, nice story. He was not drafted out of college. Draft came and went. He was not selected, but signed later on as a free agent. Plays first in addition to catching. That is hit off Wilton Lopez in the ninth last night to drive into. Runner takes off on a delay. Here's Snyder's throw to Lowry, and he is out. Baker's thrown out. 
And the play goes from two to six to end the Cubs second. No runs a hit, nobody left. The Astros lead it one to nothing. Today, the Astros play green ambassador Chris Johnson and I visited Landra Middle School and Shannon Warren's sixth to eighth grade special needs class. They were rewarded for their earth friendly efforts and they're here at the game tonight. And uh, the book William is Going Green was read to the kids by none other than CJ. And then he answered their questions. Are you the William in the book? No. Pretty good book though. CJ was talking about. He said, "That's some pressure reading in front of a class oh, yeah, like oh, that." Yeah, you got to turn the page to show the pictures. <laughs> he did all that. 286. He had a bomb last night. His fifth of the year. Drove in three. He's got 23 runs batted in. Said he was surprised how far that ball carried into the patio list. Yeah, big fly. 430 feet into the nachos. Takes that pitch, and that's a quality pitch for Wood. One ball, one strike. Chris, a 326 career hitter against the Cubs with four homers, has 14 runs batted in. Fouls it back. One and two. One of the kids asked him how much money he makes. That question comes up a lot. It does. Ball players. Yeah, it sure does. And of course, they don't want to answer it. So what I said was, well, don't focus so much on what they're making now. Let's talk about what they make in the minor leagues. It's not much. I just tell the kids to look it up online. And get it. I can't. Two balls, two strikes. CJ right back in there. He's not going to let Wood push him out of the box. Flaring out there. Watch, watch the reaction. Mm -hmm. Took umbrage. In the dirt. Three balls, two strikes. CJ is <laughs> jacked up, boy. Ball. You're not going to knock me out the plate, and you're not going to fool me with that changeup. <laughs> I mean, he's just squeezing the daylights out of that bat. Yes, he is. He is geared for this 3 2 pitch. And it's in the air, foul and out of play. Chris went to Stetson. He had that question from the youngsters today about going to college. Said he was drafted out of high school. Yeah, he didn't like what he did with that pitch. And just a little bit behind that fastball. It's out of a deference to the wood changeup. And that is strike three. He caught ball four. He was against the changeup again, I think. Third strikeout for Wood. wood. 
Kind of fooled him there. He didn't, he didn't think Wood would come back to back with the fastball. Is on three two. He did clearly. That's a strike. CJ just trying to buy a call there from home plate umpire Guccione. Chris Snyder's next. 186 for Chris. Two homers, eight runs batted in. Well, Chris Johnson today was in that neighborhood, Spring Branch, near where Chris Snyder went to high school, Spring Woods. Jason Castro ripped a big three run homer last night. And Chris hit a homer in his last start. And that was off uh, Derek Holland of the Texas Rangers Saturday night here in the Astros 6 5 comeback win. Very good homestand for production by the Astros catchers. It's 2 0. It's worked out very well getting them both reestablished this season in the lineup after back injuries. To Chris Snyder and the knee injury to Jason Castro, of course. Now the infielders shift around to the pull side. And it's 2 1. And you'll see those Cubs infielders moving from pitch to pitch, depending on the situation. It used to be when he did went over scouting reports, you know, a coach who, who would lead the meeting might say, you know, we're going to play this guy a step to pull in the infield straight away in the outfield play the pitch play the count. Meaning he's more likely to you know when he's got two strikes the hitters more likely to hit the ball the other way or, or if it's a change up he's more likely to pull but. They're taking it to another level. You know, actually moving the infielders dramatically prior to a pitch. In the air and Darwin Barney goes out toward right field but the Jesus is there. Two outs. This Major League Baseball on Fox season Fox Sports is uh, proud to support Boys and Girls Club of America. A place where youth can reach their full potential as productive caring responsible citizens. To learn more please visit greatfutures.org slash Fox Sports. Two outs for Wood in a one nothing game and Jordan Schaefer. Reinserted into the starting lineup tonight, but in the number eight spot, comes up at 254 with two homers, 11 runs batted in, 331 on base average for Jordan. Third baseman in close. He looks at ball one. Jordan has sat out the last two games after leaving with a, a leg injury Saturday night on a diving attempt in the outfield. That one goes out of play. Schaefer had a lower leg muscle strain and felt much better quickly after the injury. And Justin Maxwell had a brush together in the outfield in the game Saturday night. And Schaefer left after one at bat. That was on the inside the park homer by David Murphy. Bunning. Wood comes over and backhand flip gets him. It's a one, two, three second, and the Astros lead it one to nothing after two.
Just back to 1992. Pat Listash, the third base coach of the Cubs, was the 92 AL Rookie of the Year. What former Astro was second in the AL Rookie of the Year voting in 92? A man that was not an Astro for very long and then went on to have a very long, very good major league career. Extremely speedy guy. Pat was speedy too. Now here is Lolly leading it off. And he was at the plate when Baker was thrown out trying to advance. That was not ruled a caught stealing because the ball was in the dirt and he took off. So it was a 2 6 play. Lolly looks at ball one. Giovanni Soto, the regular catcher, is out. He had a torn meniscus surgery and will miss a few weeks. So the Cubs are filling in with different catchers. As JD mentioned, Lolly's the fifth Cub to start at catcher this season. Ball, one strike. Boy Hill did the catching in last night's game, had a couple of hits. He was obtained from the Reds double A club. One and two. Soto's been a good one down through the years. <clears throat> With that kind of a attrition in the catching core, just imagine what it does to the, the pitchers, the starting pitchers who I've had to work with so many different catchers, and they've got obviously gotten used to Soto, who's been there a number of years now. It's tough when you got a different guy back there every start. Jay Happ takes care about number one. You can't go over Jay Happ. Nope. Too, too good of a rebounder at St. Beatty Prep. <laughs> he didn't even use all he's got. He could get another foot. Travis Wood was two for two in his first start of the year. Pat Listash, rookie of the year, 92. AT&T asked us who was second. Kenny Lofton. Dave Fleming finished third. Remember Dave Fleming, the crafty lefty from Seattle? Oh, yeah. He had 17 wins that year. And Cal Eldred, a teammate of Listash's with the Brewers, was 11 and 2. Dave Fleming now a broadcaster for the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the same guy. So that was uh, Phil Garner's club, that 92 Brewers. Yes, it was. Two balls, no strikes. To Travis Wood. He's a good hitter. Has two homers. It's two for two so far this year. Like to hit one of those homers against the Astros last year. Now he hits a shot to left center field. Travis Wood bangs one off the wall. And he's going to stop at second. He runs well, too. Hit a three run homer last year here at Houston. May 9th and he gets another extra base hit with that swing of the bat to go three for three this season. Yeah, he unloaded on that half fastball and almost knocked it out of here. And he can really scoot too. Very good athlete. Pitching thing doesn't pan out for him. Maybe he'll become a position player. Yeah. And maybe the coolest part of this whole play is I don't know if we stayed with it long enough. We didn't, but at the end of the play, he takes his elbow pad off and gives it to Carlos Lee. <laughs> Carlos more than happy to bring it over to Dave McKay to save a little time. Now De Jesus, he poked a single between third and short. Strike one to David. Here we go. Here, Carlos, I got you. I got you, big fella. And, and oh, by the way, hang me a slider next time I'm up there, would you? <laughs> well, De Jesus opened the night a 404 career hitter against Houston from interleague days with Kansas City. How's that, that one away? And it's no balls, two strikes to David. Cubs made it pretty clear after they got to Jesus that he would be their leadoff man and right fielder, not the powerful sort of right fielder, but a guy who gets on base, 356 career on base average for De Jesus. It's a one-two count, and Dale Swaim has been talking about shifting the players at the top of his lineup. 
The latest story indicated he was going to wait until after this series to do that. Try to get something working offensively on this team, which has a 289 slugging percentage against left handed pitching for the season. That's horrible. <laughs> that is bad. Two balls, two strikes. Cubs are 6 and 12 away from Wrigley Field this season. And they're trying to snap a seven game losing streak tonight. They've already had a six game streak earlier this year. Reed Johnson's on deck. Round to do Altuve's right. On to lead. Two outs, Wood to third. And it'll be Reed Johnson. He bounced into a 5 4 force in the first inning. Baltimore leads Boston 2 to 1. They're in the bottom of the sixth at Baltimore. Kevin Euclid has returned to the lineup for the Red Sox. He hit his third homer. Going to be interesting to see how that playing time goes at third base with Euclid trying to reclaim his job. Is that where that Middlebrooks kid is playing? Yeah, he's a third oh, baseman also. Tearing it up. They may have sent him down. We didn't see anything on that. You can't send him down. He's their best player. <laughs> That's a good point. What would you say their their slugging average was against lefties? 289? 289. Yeah, there are 89 batters who qualify for the batting title in the National League right now. I've had enough of bats. Okay. There's only five of them in the whole league that have a slugging average less than 289. Wow. So their whole team is down there. Yes. Against lefties. That's a week they have been. I mentioned earlier just one home run against a left handed pitcher this year for the Cubs. 2 0. Oh. Doesn't bother the world's most interesting man, though. Nope. And he's grown out the beard again this year. Yeah, he and DeJesus both going for that title. Presidents celebrate his birthday. Who else could achieve such fame after being a 17th round pick of Toronto in 99. Now see but Reed Johnson's a guy that you want in there against lefties so far this year not so much but in his career he's been very good against left handed pitching. Mm -hmm. And so Dale Swain much like Brad Mills they're, they got, they're in the same boat they don't have that star studded lineup like the Rangers so you got to take advantage of those those matchups. 308 lifetime against lefties. So forget about this year. The body of work is very good. And he draws a walk. Castro's coming up. First walk of the night for half. His 19th of the season in his 48th inning. Castro struck out in the first inning. Now you had an interesting fact on him last night getting his 400th hit so early in his career, joining that. Select company. 325th major league game last year or last night, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, just a handful of guys have gotten there quicker or more quickly, I believe, would be the proper phrasing. Okay. Since you were in school today. Yeah, <laughs> too bad we didn't learn much. Castro takes a look at ball one. That was fun going out to Landrum, and the kids are here tonight. A very interesting story of uh, teachers submitted essays and uh, Ms. Warren's class was given that opportunity to visit the baseball game tonight after the Astros visited them Chris Johnson today and uh, the essay was very touching to read uh, talking about her special needs class six to the eighth grade and how they were shy introverted until they started this uh, play green effort. Went around uh, collecting bottles and cans and papers from the rooms, and uh, they became a lot more outgoing. The kids really changed their personality, so to speak, with this effort, and really grew. And uh, the other kids in the school really responded to it very well. Well, great teacher can make a huge difference. You know that. They grew a garden in the middle of the school. Big cut there by Castro. There's a courtyard in the middle of the school, and they grew a garden there. 
One ball, two strikes. Think any beans in? I think they had some beans. They had tomatoes. A good variety. They had unfortunately had to remove the garden when we were there today. It had already been done, but they distributed uh, the plants to various people. Strikeout. Yes. Wow. That ends the third inning for Chicago with no runs a hit, two men stranded. Jay Happ gets his third strikeout and maintains a one nothing lead. His third of the year. Good night for baseball here with a very steamy day outside. The air conditioning making everybody comfortable and enjoying a nice ball game between the Cubs and the Astros. Game two of a three game series. The finale of the homestand will be tomorrow night. Jay Happ will lead it off for the Astros in the third to be followed by Altuve and Lowry. Astros Baseball on Fox Sports Houston is brought to you by the Columbia Pictures movie That's My Boy starring Adam Sandler and Andy Samberg in theaters June 15th. Travis Wood warms up before facing Jay Happ. Jay will lead off the home third inning out to the end. Lowry to follow. The Astros have won their last nine games when they've scored at least four runs. Those youngsters looking as Jay Happ settles in with two hits and 16 at bats. A 125 batting average for Jay and one RBI this season. The Mets and Pittsburgh are tied 1 1. They've played seven in Pittsburgh. Strike one to Happ. The night started for the Astros with a homer from Altuve, a double from Lowry. Then Wood got tough and he's retired six in a row. Wood had three three ball counts in the first inning. No balls, two strikes. Cubs starters have 10 wins, 16 losses, and a 4.21 ERA. It's a one ball, two strike count. Cubs will go with Jeff Samarja tomorrow night. He has an ERA of 3.00 versus Wandy Rodriguez. His earned run average is 2.24. 7.05 start time. The, uh, when, when the Cubs acquired Travis Wood and the Sean Marshall deal, I thought it would be a given that he'd be in their rotation to start the year, but obviously it wasn't a given. Well, yeah, the thinking was on the part of many in the media that he would be in the rotation. And there was one of the articles today. And we get the uh, daily clippings from various out of town newspapers. One of the Chicago papers had a quote from Travis Wood, and he said that he put too much pressure on himself in spring training, and he did not have a good spring. Broken bat, he knocks it down in the barrel of the bats behind him. And he makes a fine play to get half. 
that distraction of that broken bat. Passing pretty close to him, and there it is. A dangerous weapon there, and great concentration by Wood to stay with the play. You don't take quite the satisfaction when you saw off the opposing pitcher. Now, if that's a cleanup hitter and you get that broken piece of bat, that's that's a trophy. Yes, it is. Oh, also a trip to the hospital if it hits you. That is scary. The jagged edge headed right for him. That requires some serious concentration. Altuve ripped a home run. Strike one. Glenn Close, right? Yeah. Jagged edge. Glenn Close, I think was. so, yeah. Good movie. Altuve looks at that one for ball one. One and one. Jose leads all National League second baseman in steals. He's second in hits and third in batting average and on base average. The home run he provided is a bonus. He's hit 350 against lefties. Fun. Fielded by Wood. Didn't get it where he wanted to. The third baseman Mather had just backed up about three steps prior to that pitch. Jay Happ struck out Castro and Soriano in the first after a leadoff single. Put up a zero. And then the leadoff homer by Altuve made it one to nothing off Wood in this matchup of lefties. Wood has gotten tough. He's retired eight in a row now. Jet Lowry follows. Jet hit a screaming Mimi to the right field wall and over for a double. Inside for ball one. Center fielder Johnson plays him about five steps toward right center. Astros learning that trying to bunt out Travis Wood is a losing proposition. Schaefer tried at a drag bunt up the first base side. Wood made a heck of a play on that one. This one an easy play. Altuve wasn't able to get the bunt down the third baseline, or close enough to the line anyway. Two and zero. Oh. Oh, a good-looking athlete. The way he swings the bat and fields the position, also running well. Mike Hampton without the sinker. <laughs> Missing there. He falls behind. Three and zero. Oh. Lowry. Is tops among National League shortstops and slugging at 496, tied for the lead in homers, seven second in on base average and fourth in batting average. Now on base to hit 27 home runs, would be the most ever by an Astro shortstop, and tied for the most ever by an uh, Astro a middle infielder. Jeff Kent had 27. Here with the Astros, Biz I think had 26 in his best year. That is impressive. It ends the streak of eight in a row retired by Wood, and it brings up Justin Maxwell, who struck out on a 3 2 offering in the first. Cleveland is in front of Detroit 4 3. They're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Alex Avila hit his fifth for Detroit. It's Washington 5, Philadelphia 1. They're in the last of the seventh. Half Philly. Desmond and Ankiel have gone deep for the Nats. Foul ball strike one. I was asking Justin Maxwell, are you playing more? Than you thought you would when you first came to the Astros, he said. I don't know. So, no, I wasn't sure so how much. They I asked. He wasn't thinking about it. Right. That's a good answer. Mm -hmm. You join a new organization, you don't know what. Know what they have in, in, in store for me. I just put the uniform on and play when they tell me to play. So, Jordan Zimmerman getting the best of Roy Halladay in that ball game tonight. Doc has been on the losing side a few times this year, hasn't he? Give up five and six innings tonight. He has a very average ERA of 3.58. Mm. Not doctor like. Right side of the field, wide open on the infield. Probably rattle off three or four shutouts here in the next month. <laughs> yeah. Be back to normal. Two balls and a strike. Maxwell hit a big. Two run go ahead homer Saturday night against Texas, and that come from behind win after he came off the bench with the injury to Schaefer to take over in the outfield. This is his 11th start of the year. 
Pushes a bunt, but he pops it up to Wood. And Wood handles out number three. After three, one nothing Houston. End of the game, and tonight we've got a great story for you. Andra Cooper, who has a son serving in Afghanistan, was brought to the game tonight under the ruse that she was going to be the Budweiser walk-off hero and the military mom of the game. Now, part of that honor is some free beverages. And when she turned to accept her free beverages, she found that it was her son, uh, Justin Rosner, who is home a little bit early from Afghanistan. And to talk about the thrill of turning around to accept your drink. And uh, wait a minute. How about that waiter? I love that waiter. He's beautiful. I he think, just looks uh, so we beautiful. Have special guest I, right behind I just her. can't it's tell you. I'm going to cry again. <laughs> well, now I understand you've been a little worried about him lately, right? I have. I have. I got an email from him, and he was kind of a little down, and I thought, oh. You know, you worry about them when they're over there. I had this one there for a while, and I, I kind of worried about him. So then I just told his brother, I'm worried about Justin. And he's like, oh, he'll be all right. And then here he is. <laughs> sure enough, he is all right, and a pretty yeah. good waiter, too. Yeah. Uh, Airman First Class Justin Rosner, welcome home, first of all. Much. And, uh, how much fun was this tonight? Uh, it was it was great. Uh, I like surprising my mom. She really deserves this. You know, she's been really supportive for me and my brother. And, uh, you know, it, it was a really good thing. So I'm happy that uh, Astros and everyone else put it all together for us. Yeah, Justin's brother, um, Staff Sergeant Kevin Rosner, right here, also served in Afghanistan. This has got to be fun for you. Absolutely. Definitely worth it. Good to see your brother again. Uh, yes. Uh, I was in on it, so I knew he was home, but uh, <laughs> it was definitely worth it. So you had to keep the secret. That's good. Uh, that was the worst part, keeping the secret. Keeping the secret was the hardest part. Jim Cooper, uh, this has got to be a lot of fun for you. And the, the biggest thing was is that, Kevin had come home, and that was a big enough surprise. And then on Mother's Day, we had seen a, a short Skype video or whatever from him uh, in Afghanistan, and he really looked depressed. So to see him here, there's no way that I was expecting him to be here. I was just glad that Kevin was here. But to have both of them here now, it's great. And this is my third son, and he won't go in the military. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere except college. <laughs> That's great stuff. Well, hey, everybody, thank you so much. You are our progressive family of the game. Uh, the Rosners have done their duty, and we are very appreciative. Thank you very much. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Bart. Bravo. Bravo. Heartwarming story. Soriano puts a foul and out of play. It's still three balls, two strikes. Yeah, that was a great visit. She came flying out of that chair. <laughs> It's fun to be in on those surprises. Mm -hmm. They showed it on the big screen when it when it happened uh, live, and she couldn't take her hands off of them. It was really neat. Soriano out to left center field hits a flyer. The outfielders are just watching this trajectory, and that's a home run to tie it. Soriano with number four of the season ties the game 1-1. His 23rd career long ball against the Astros.
Maybe the one real legitimate home run threat in that Cub order tonight. Soriano picked on a fastball, kind of a hanging fastball from Jay Happ. Just the second home run for the Cubs this year against left handed pitching. It's the eighth pitch of the at bat. It's about a thigh high heater. Big high finish lets the bat fly. He knew he got it. That's the ninth homer surrendered by Jay Happ. He's pitched 48 and a third innings this season. Cubs tied with their fourth hit. It's 1 1, and Joe Mathers next. Showing bunt. He pulls the bat back, and it's ball one to Mathers. Rash of bunting breaking out here tonight. What's with that? Kind of crazy. Kind of a lean, long, and strong guy. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Jason Worth. Mm -hmm. One and one to Mather. Mather played with Atlanta last year. He had only 75 at bats with the Braves. He's from Sandpoint, Idaho. He has spent 10 years in minor league baseball. Third round pick of the Cardinals in 01. One ball, two strikes. He has a 511 slugging percentage. 352 on base average for Joe Mather, even though he hasn't had a whole lot of playing time. 47 at bats before tonight. What he has done has been intriguing. He became the first Cubs outfielder to homer this year. It was in their 22nd game. Two balls, two strikes. And then against his former club, the Cardinals, he provided a game winning hit late in the game. For a 3 2 Cubs win on the 23rd of April. First came to the big leagues with the Cardinals back in 2008, but he's yet to establish himself on any kind of a regular basis. He pokes this one into right field. Back to back hits for the Cubs, and Baker will come up. We go to Greg Lucas. Astros have something special coming up on the third day for Fate and Friday Family Night. The Astros are excited to welcome Grammy winning and platinum recording artist third day for Fate and Family Night on Saturday, June 23rd. Concert's going to take place following the 305 game. The concert is included with your game ticket. Tickets for Faith and Family Night featuring third day are available at Astros.com slash third. Where else? Back to you. Baker, who's single to center field. Slices that one out of play. They strike one on Baker. Speaking of military, his dad uh, was a cadet at West Point. Actually taught computer science there for a time. Well, he was born actually in Germany. Yeah, he, he grew up all over the place. In that military lifestyle. No balls, two strikes. Back in 05, Baker was the opening day third baseman for the Rockies. Half now in a 1 1 game. Gets him to go for one way upstairs and strikes him out. That's number four. It's a JD type fastball mm -hmm. right yeah, there. Looks so good coming out of the hand. Darwin Barney is a tougher man to strike out. Barney struck out 67 times in 529 at bats last year. Hit a fly ball to center in the second. There's strike one to him. It's Cincinnati for Atlanta too. They're in the bottom of the seventh at Cincinnati. Michael Bourne has hit his second for the Braves. Zach Cozart number five. Brandon Phillips three and four for the Reds this year. Reds only a half game behind the front running Cardinals in the National League Central. And the Astros are only four games back in fourth place. The Pirates trail by three in third place. Very tightly bunched NL Central division right now. Tightly bunch and nobody's really going all that fast. <laughs> yeah, 23 19 is the best the division has to offer. It's like one of those Olympic bike races. Analogy I've used before, you know, where they all kind of stay in that cluster, going real slow around the, around the loop until somebody breaks out. Exactly. Well, that's where we are in the NL Central right now. And 
The Cardinals are going to have to deal with the loss of Lance Berkman for at least several weeks, if not a season. The latest report was six to eight weeks, but he's going to get another examination when he goes in for surgery in Colorado to see if the ligament was involved. Fly ball to right field. Maxwell there. Two outs. And it's Lolly coming up next. It's got to be Brandon Beachy's worst start of the year for Atlanta. He's given up four runs and six and a third. His ERA is 1.79. Matt Latos is on the hill for the Reds. How about a Roldis Chapman? He was pulled over for doing about 93 in yeah. his sports car. Yeah. He, did, he, he gets applauded when he throws 100 miles an hour with the radar gun, but when you drive 93, <laughs> it's a different. He needs, he needs to learn. To, there's a difference there. Pitch fast, good. Drive fast, no, not so much. Keep the 93 on the field, not on the streets. Lolly grounded back to the pitcher. And he had just been named the closer, at least the part-time closer of the Reds. Sure, a lot of adrenaline. He's got to drive fast now. It's hard to close when you're in jail. He, uh, he also he just, he's been sued by some guy back in Cuba, too, for millions of dollars. Oh, really? Yeah, some guy's been jailed, and he's saying it's because uh, gentleman testified against him or made a claim against him that wasn't fair. Chris Johnson there for the catch. The homer by Soriano ties this game 1-1 in the mid-fourth. Totally chicken club. Make it a combo with fries and a drink. By the all-new Mazda CX-5 with 35 highway miles per gallon. And by Mattress Firm. Save money, sleep happy. Astros coming up on the bottom of the fourth. Tie game 1-1. Here's Bill Brown and Jim Deshays. Well, Greg, a lot of people on our crew slept happy after the game last night. <laughs> after that effort with... Uh, Technical problems, and uh, we thank everybody who watched the game for bearing with us. We got a different production truck in from Dallas today. Everything's back to good standards again for tonight's game. That was a crazy night, but uh, especially Damon McGavick uh, really performing heroically under pressure last night. Carlos Lee leads it off in the home fourth inning. He grounded out on a 3 2 count in the first. Astros uh, mission right now get the ball out of the infield. They haven't done that much yet tonight. Couldn't get it past the pitcher last inning. Foul back. It's a one ball one strike count. Yeah they tried to bunt several yeah. times. They, uh, the Altuve home run Lowry double and then a fly ball by Snyder to right the only balls out of the infield so far three punch outs the ground ball the second. Three comebackers to the mound, two of which were bunts, a walk, and a bunt pop up to the mound. That's a good foul. Stop bunting with Travis Wood out there. 
And now, Mather may not have a lot of, a lot of experience at third base, so that may justify it. But Mather, uh, Wood's such a good athlete. Takes a lot of pressure off the third baseman, but they should have been running last night off Garza because he's been terrible, but they were hitting turn around home run, so they didn't really need to bunt off him last night. Well, Wood looks like he's up to it tonight. And there's a soft liner caught by Barney. One out. Now you wouldn't have thought that two batters into this game a bomb from Altuve and then a rocket to right off the bat of Lowry. Obviously, two batters does not tell the story. A lot of times it serves as a wake up call, like that first punch a fighter catches on the jaw, kind of snaps him into reality. Wait a minute, I'm in a, I'm in a contest here. I better start competing or it's going to be a short night. JD Martinez on a 3 2 count took strike three. Fox tracks brought to you by Steel. Going to show you this one. Change up, down and away. Yankees lead Kansas City three to two. They're in the bottom of the seventh at Yankee Stadium. Phil Hughes started for the Yankees. Luke Hochaver was the Kansas City starter. They're both out now. That pitch also missing, and it's two balls, no strikes to J.D. Jeff Franco hit his third home run for the Royals. Robinson Cano number five for the Yanks. J.D.'s been caught in between a lot in recent games. This would be a good time to just sell out, take a big swing, hope to catch a fastball. If he throws a strike. It's 3 0. JD's walked 22 times this year. He's in the top 10. They may turn him loose here. Pretty good pitch. 3 and 1. When you say turn him loose, he's not hitting the lick for the last month. Why would you turn him loose 3 0? Well, because he has been caught in between, he's just he's been fooled quite a bit. 3 0, you know you're going to get a heater. You got one there, 3 1, good aggressive swing, one of the better swings he's taken in recent games. Still not on it, though. That's the problem. Even when he knows he's going to get a heater or can sell out on a fastball, he still hasn't been able to do a whole lot with it. You see that Giancarlo Stanton grand slam last night off the video board in left field? When I read about it, I did not see oh. it. Massive shot. Foul back. Miami leads Colorado tonight, seven to four, bottom of the sixth inning. Sixty five pitches, thirty five of which have been strikes for Travis Wood. Bouncer over the mound, Castro comes after it. Two outs. Just two hits for the Astros. The first two batters. A homer for Altuve. A double for Lowry. And such a promising start. Now it's turned into a 1-1 battle with Johnson coming up. Chris took strike three in the second. The youngsters at the Landrum. Elementary were asking him or middle school were asking him uh, what's his daily routine routine. He said he gets the ballpark about one o'clock. Starts looking at video of the opposing starting pitcher. Fouls it away strike one. And everything is geared toward. What that pitcher might be doing to him a few hours later. Going through all the pregame practice routines. It's one and one. I think it was Tony Gwynn who really started the study of video. He used to carry a small video machine with him on airplanes and really lock in on all the pitchers. Edit together highlights of how they pitched him down through the years. Now they all do it. Yeah. Well, Tony, the, the ironic thing is, Tony didn't need it. That's <laughs> true. He was so hard to fool. Nobody ever knew how to get him out. <laughs> Castro lays out for it, gets up. Throws a one hopper. Unbelievable oh, play. God. No, you didn't. Watch out. Uh, he threw him out of the game. I uh, just find him, I think. 
I think he's just fined him. I don't think he ejected him for throwing the uh, equipment. This is a sparkling play. I don't know if he got him or not. This eight game homestand, three game series with the Cubs tomorrow night here on Fox Sports Houston. Wandy Rodriguez makes his 20th career start against the Cubs. Overall, three and four with that 2.24 ERA. It's the fifth best ERA among National League Southpaws and ninth best in the league. He'll go against Jeff Sabarja. Our coverage begins at 6.30. This has been the Mazda Game Break. Brownie JD, watch a lot of the highlight shows, and you won't see a better highlight than the one that Starlin Castro just turned in. Oh, what a spectacular play! Diving to his right on the outfield grass. Gets up and throws him out. Yeah. Bang bang of their first base call could have gone either way. CJ's lucky his helmet didn't come up and hit Cheetah to yeah. Cheetah because I, he would have he been, been suspended for a few games. Well, Matt Downs has replaced Chris Johnson at third base after Johnson got ejected. You know when I first saw. Cheetah's or Timmy's a his I thought he was just finding it. I think he's pointing up to the press uh -huh. box to find. That's normally what they do when they uh, if a guy throws his equipment. Usually when you eject a guy, it's a little bit more mm -hmm. in your face. Close, close call at first. He's jacked up tonight, boy. Line drive left field. Caught by JD Martinez and Wood. Gets another good swing of the bat. Now this pitcher will not go down easily. Safe or out at first, CJ. Too close to call. Yep. Couldn't Hard to tell from that angle. Couldn't make a. Couldn't make a really. You, you, if you threw the red flag, you wouldn't be able to overturn the call. No. <laughs> David De Jesus is the batter. Led off the game with a single through the left side, and he bounced out to second. Downs, the new third baseman, is in on the grass at third. Strike two to Jesus. Tampa Bay leads Toronto seven to five there in the bottom of the sixth inning. Luke Scott hit his eighth, Carlos Pena his sixth for the Rays. Johnny Gomes, number two for Toronto. It's a one ball one strike count. Minnesota is torching the White Sox nine to one after four in Chicago. Justin Morneau hit his sixth. For the White Sox Gordon Beckham. Belted number five of the year. Bounce to first Carlos Lee backs up gets the hop spins tosses Hap with the catch. Two outs. We go to Greg Lucas. Well, it's the new Miller Lite punch top can for a smoother pour. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time.
Two down and it's Reed Johnson. Johnson bounced into a force play in the first. He walked on four pitches in the third inning. Ronnie, do you know who Eric Kratz is? The catcher? He was first major league home run tonight for the Phillies. He was with the Pirates, but yeah. So Chooch has the night off, huh? Strike one. He's not hurt, is he? Not that I'm aware of. Boy, Ruiz has had a heck of a start to the year. Big cut there by Johnson. It's no balls, two strikes. Giants lead four to two at Milwaukee after four. Ryan Braun uh, is playing tonight, but he had a groin injury last night. Arias hit his first four of the Giants. Kane versus Markham. Swing at a pitch in the dirt. And Snyder throws him out. On the strikeout from two to three. Four and a half innings in the books. Cubs won. Astros won. Kids, it's not about the score, it's about the experience. So tune in each Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox Sports Houston, or you can visit hometownkids.tv for more information. We have a good number of hometown kids here in the ballpark, hoping the Astros get some extra runs. Bill Brown and Jim Deshays will tell us about it if they do, guys. Thank you, Greg. It's a 1 1 game. Five of the seven hits belong to the Cubs. No errors tonight. Cubs have stranded four. The Astros have left two. Chris Snyder leads it off. He hit a fly ball to right in the second. And there's ball one. That's the last ball to leave the infield. Still looking for that. <laughs> and it's ironic because Wood, when we saw him with the Reds over the last couple of years, he was more of a fly ball type pitcher. It's two balls, no strikes. Carlos Ruiz was thrown out of the game tonight. The Phillies catcher was thumbed out, arguing with home plate umpire Gary Cedarstrom over the call of the pitch. He's going to battle for his man, Doc Halliday. Yeah. Foul back, and it's two and one. But it says uh, Brian Schneider took his place behind the plate, so somehow Kratz got into the game and hit a home run. Maybe pinch hitting. Two balls, two strikes to Chris Snyder. Kevin Euclid's return caused a little shuffling. Will Middlebrooks was not sent down. He started at third. Euclid started at first. Adrian Gonzalez moved to right field. 
where he played a couple of games last weekend in interleague play at Philadelphia. Scoring runs really hasn't been a problem for the Sox. They just have to pitch. Mm -hmm. Three two now. And that's where Roy Oswald may come in. In the air to right field. To Jesus. One out. We go to Greg. Hey, we got a moment in Astros history brought to you by the MD Anderson Cancer Center, making cancer history. Enos Cabell will never forget this one. This uh, took place on May 22, 1984, when Fred Bird, the Cardinal mascot, tackled Enos in pregame warm-ups, and that aggravated a knee injury after heated words. The Astros were really fired up. They went on to win 4-3 and 12, thanks to a Mark Bailey triple. Watch out for those mascots. That was our moment in Astros history. Wow. Couldn't have been heated words from Fred Bird. Mascots can't talk. Not supposed to, are they? Uh, Enos along with Cheo Cruz. <laughs> Michael Bolden's warming up for the Cubs. There was something retrieved on the warning track a moment ago. So, yeah, I don't blame Enos. The mascot tackling him. That's not the kind of playful any player wants before a game, especially when he has a knee injury. Yeah. Now, it's okay for a player to tackle a mascot. Oh That's yeah, part, or, or to hit him with a bat when they run by the dugout during the sausage race, <laughs> as Randall Simon did. <laughs> well, Jordan Schaefer was strike one. Mike Hampton, who tackled uh, the uh, puffy taco over there in an exhibition game in San Antonio, that was years fun. back. Yeah, that was a real takedown. I don't remember who the general manager was at that point, but whoever he was was burying his head in his hands at the thought of Hampton flying off the bench and, and just diving through the air and taking down the puffy taco. What is a puffy taco anyway? I don't know, but what if the puffy taco was being played by like a 16 year old girl and Hampton <laughs> drops his best free safety <laughs> tackle on her? Oh boy. I'm not sure who was in the puffy taco back in the day. No. Well, we never know, do we? No balls, two strikes to Schaefer. Tried to bunt his way on, but Wood threw him out in the second inning. Oh, nice little carom shot for number one. Perseverance. Numero uno wound up with a souvenir. High to right field. De Jesus comes in. Barney feels off. Two outs, and it's Jay Happ batting next. This has been a tale of two games for Wood. Altuve tagged him with a long homer. Lowry ripped a double. Since then, a lot of quiet outs. Chris Johnson certainly made a strong bid for a hit in the fourth inning, but he was called out and then thrown out of the game on Castro's brilliant play. Yeah, it's too bad CJ got run tonight because he he had, he had a lot of energy tonight. He was he really did. He was kind of worked up. He's got to go probably ride the bike in the clubhouse to burn some of that off, pump some iron. I don't know what you guys did over at that Landrum the, Middle School, but he got him jacked up. The kids got him fired up. Yeah. He said he was going to do something big tonight. Well, he didn't say it. I said it. One ball, one strike. To Jay. Measly base runners for the Astros so far. Two balls, two strikes. St. Louis won San Diego nothing. They've played five in St. Louis. Adam Wainwright on the mound. Cardinals. Dodgers in Arizona just getting underway in Phoenix. Half to second. Barney over to first to make it a one, two, three, fifth. That's seven more in a row. Retired by Wood. Keep this game tied. One one.
between innings at another game, the Cincinnati Reds game against the Atlanta Braves. And Aroldis Chapman is on the mound tonight. He's been clocked at 100, throwing a pitch, that is. And uh, it's 4 to 3 Cincinnati in the ninth inning. Yeah, it's just it's a dilemma because Chapman's on there throwing 100 miles an hour, and on the big screen here in the ballpark was Kiss Cam. And I'm always torn. <laughs> this game's got a lot of drama, but Kiss Cam is always entertaining. You see the pitching lines of Wood and Hap, and it's a 1 1 game with homers from Altuve and Soriano accounting for the runs. Castro is the batter leading off the sixth inning. He's whiffed twice. There's ball one to Castro. Matt Downs even with the bag at third for Starlin Castro. Looks at that one. It's one and one. The most hits since May 7, 2010, in the major leagues. Michael Young, 414. Castro is fourth. Ichiro second. Adrian Gonzalez is third. That's when Castro made his debut, yeah. May 7, 2010. So he hit the ground running, or he hit the ground hitting at least. He sure did. Two and one. 22 years old with 400 hits already. Two balls, two strikes, and you know he has tons, obviously, of natural ability. Now, how much learning will he do as the pitchers try to adapt? That's one of the real questions. Yeah. That's the thing, you know, he doesn't have to get better to be a really good major league player for a long time, but he has such a high ceiling. So if he continues to improve, he's, you know, he's, who knows? This kid could be a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Three and two. Gonna have to find a little more discipline, draw, draw more walks. He just won't get enough pitches to hit. And he went down for the third time on strikes in this game. That's strikeout number six for half. And all three of the strike threes were pitches out of the zone. A couple breaking balls down, and now a fastball about uh, letter high. Half has really worked him over. He has. Last year, Castro had 674 bats. He struck out 96 times. He has struck out already 30 times. Soriano homered in the fourth after striking out in the first. Well, he's on a pace to get a whole lot more strikeouts than he did last year. Yeah, and I haven't looked at the numbers. And uh, we'll take a look at our Fox tracks brought to you by Nissan there. It, you know, it may be that because he doesn't walk, he's trying to get deeper into counts and see more pitches, and that's making him more vulnerable to the strikeout. Soriano fouls at 0-2. Rui Jaramillo is very well known, highly regarded as a hitting coach. Astros, Rangers, Cubs was talking tonight before the game around the batting cage about the process. He said, you know, so many people look at results, but it's the process that's really, really important. So what they look at is how many hits did you get? But what were the at bats like? What was the process of the at bat? You might have lined out three times and had great at bats. And, and the thinking being, as long as you're having those good at bats, sooner or later the hits are going to fall in for you. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it is about results. That's how you get paid in this game. But Rudy, it's kind of like the Zen master of hitting. And Mike Barnett says the same thing. Rudy talked about visualizing. Two balls, two strikes. It's really getting into a mindset. Timing and rhythm separate the hands away from the body, get the hands back. Big, big proponent of the lower body really helped Jeff Bagwell become a power hitter. He greatly influenced my game. He was his first big league hitting coach was here. I was still an Astro back in the day. Is he the guy who taught you to pull the ball? He's the guy that taught me to stop wasting my time. <laughs> stop trying. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I can't help you, pal. <laughs> well, he was very influential then. I mean, you talked about the visualizing, and, and Rudy was kind of new school back in the day. And he had us in spring training. The whole team would be out there with bats visualizing. Oh. That's what the, the Japanese teams used to do that. I remember when I was in the instructional league in 1982 after my first year in pro ball. 
Uh, there was a Japanese team there at Pirate City staying with them. the Yankees there, the Pirates were there, and the Japanese team, minor leaguers. And they were out in the parking lot at 10 o'clock at night swinging their bats. <laughs> we thought they were nuts. Now to be in. That's what Rudy had us doing. <laughs> and so he would he would he would he would tell you he's you know he'd he'd say, okay, fastball down and away, hit it to hit it the other way, and you'd, you'd kind of mimic that swing and and then he'd ask the different players to do it, you know. Biz, give me one, you know. Biz, okay, uh, curveball, you know, stay on it, and hit it up the middle or whatever. And he said, Cammy, Cammy, give me one, and, and Cammy was like, fastball right down the middle, outside <laughs> corner, you know. Every service check swinging, nobody, knew, <laughs> nobody knew exactly what was going on. <laughs> That's great. Joe Mathers single to right field in the fourth inning. He had a two-two pitch away from him. He just hit it hard the other way. He's one for two. And I would imagine that Rudy really liked that approach once he got to two strikes. 100 pitches for Jay. He's given up five hits. Two balls, no strikes. Well, Jay's rebounded nicely two starts ago at Pittsburgh. He gave up five runs in five innings, including two long balls. Last time out, six shut out against Milwaukee. Three balls, no strikes. Uh, he's going to give up home runs. It's just the, the nature of the style of pitcher he is. When you're a fly ball pitcher, you're going to give up some big flies. But if you can keep the walks down. And he did not that time. A two out walk to Mather is the second of the night for Hap. And Baker follows. Baker is one for two. Quickly, Doug Brocale will come out. Let's see how long he stays on the dirt. Eleven seconds. Brad Osmus will manage Israel in the World Baseball Classic. Qualifying begins for Israel in November. And Brad, I think we just got a list of all the uh, people who are going to represent their teams in the annual draft, which will be two weeks from yesterday. It'll be Larry Durker uh, for the Astros and one of their scouts. I think Brad's going to represent the Padres. Baker's one for two. There's ball one. So, uh, so this uh, the Israeli national team he's going to manage, uh -huh. and they're trying to qualify for the World Baseball Classic. Is that the idea? Um, Have to go through some kind of qualifying process. Sounds like a good guess. I'm not sure. Because remember uh, a couple of years ago he was talking about playing in that, playing for them. Okay, and, I didn't. And Sean Green was as well. I didn't remember that. Foul back. Wilton Lopez is warming up for Houston. It's a one ball, one strike count. See, uh, the draft will be held at uh, MLB Networks Studio 42 in New Jersey. And uh, let's see. Yes, Brad Osmus will represent the Padres. And for the Astros, it's Larry Durker and Edward Fastea, a scout. To right field, over toward the corner, Maxwell with the grab. No runs, no hits. A man stranded. It's 1 1 in the sixth.
this June. The Astros will celebrate the 1970s rainbow era as part of their 50th anniversary celebration. Join the Astros on Saturday, June 2nd, when they host the Reds, and the first 10,000 fans will receive a rainbow-style retro gym bag courtesy of Kroger. Root now and buy your tickets at Astros.com. That bring back some memories, J.D.? It does indeed. At 86-team? Yep. Back some memories for that guy and that guy as well. Altuve leads it off, home sixth inning, hits a pop-up, and a shallow right field. Here comes Darwin Barney. One pitch, one out. Wood has retired eight in a row now. Good play by Barney. This has been a crazy game. Wood allowed a leadoff homer to Altuve, then a double to Lowry, and no hits since then, just one walk. He has set yeah. down 16 of 17. And, uh, not, not a whole lot of hard contact either. No. Lowry after his walk. Now up for the third time. Double the first time up. Jed uh, hasn't seen a strike since his double. The manager of the Nationals, David Johnson, has removed Henry Rodriguez from the closer role. And he'll go with closer by committee. 2 0. Oh. So there's another. Change in a closer spot. It's been a crazy year with all the injuries and closers losing their jobs. I think it has to be the biggest year ever for a change in closer spots for the 30 teams. Two balls and a strike. And uh, Ryan Zimmerman is not in the lineup tonight. He was scratched because of a manager's decision. Who else would make that decision besides the manager? <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Woods thrown 90 pitches. Half is over 100 now. The seven, eight, nine hitters are due up in the seventh for the Cubs. Cubs have had bullpen action, so have the Astros in this game. Lowry looks a ball. So we have to assume that there's a little something going on physically with Zimmerman. They just don't want to tell anybody. That could be it. It sounds like what that manager's decision is all about. Mm -hmm. Well, they kind of had a problem with Strasburg and Davey Johnson not being on the same page with his elbow a few days ago. And they had to talk that out. Foul back. Still three and two with Maxwell on deck. Again, they're stirring for the Cubs in their bullpen. The Cubs are 15 and 27, and they're 14th in runs scored and 13th in ERA. Plenty of room for improvement in both categories for Dale Swain's club. Sean Camp's warming up, and he's one of those guys like Wilson Lopez, who's been warming up for the Astros. He can pitch about every day. Ripped on a line to left field. Soriano over, reaching down. He rolls over, and Soriano maintains possession for the catch. Vastly improved outfielder this year with the work of Dave McKay. Yeah, on the most routine of plays, you never know what you're going to get from Alfonso Soriano out there in left field. But here on a sinking line drive, he puts this one away, makes a fine play. Lowry is hitting a tough luck again. Now Maxwell. Ball one. He has struck out and popped up a bunt to the pitcher. Lowry batting left handed a couple nights ago. On Sunday actually uh, lined out twice to the right fielder. Did he move? He peeled down the town there between me and he had his head down. He didn't move. Ball two. Can't two balls you don't see. No. Two and oh. <laughs> Three and oh. It's been kind of a crazy game 
for Wood, not only in the sense that he gave up a homer and a double to the first two batters, but then he's gotten behind some guys 3 and 0. Oh. Walk Lowry on four pitches. At times he he looks like he's kind of clueless, and then he gets it back together again. Not this time. There's another four pitch walk. Now he's been able to throw change ups and fastball counts, keep the hitters off his fastball. He's for the most part stayed out of the middle of the strike zone with his fastball. He's had nine three ball counts. But overall, what a lift he has given the Cubs tonight. Just called up Triple A Iowa to join the rotation for the second time this year. His first start went well against the Dodgers. 97 pitches tonight. In that first one, he gave up three hits and three runs in six innings. Even better tonight with those numbers. Dale Swain's going to make a move. Well, probably because of the 97 pitches and then Lee coming up and Carlos 0 for 2 tonight, but he's a threat. And uh, could be a double switch the way Dale is. Yeah, home plate Dale, Dale was almost <laughs> almost to the third baseline, and he, he kind of uh oh wait a minute I got to do a double switch here. And made a quick right turn. Well, the pitchers do up third, and looks like uh, Brian Lahare is coming off the bench. He's going to first. Baker made the last out. He's coming out of the game. So Lahare will be batting ninth, and the new pitcher will be batting sixth. In this double switch. Yeah, usually if the manager crosses that third base line in this case and has not made the double switch, it's too late. <laughs> he caught himself on it. And it's a 1 1 ball game. And we'll be right back. Pitcher for tomorrow's game presented by Chevron. It will be none other than Juan e. Rodriguez on the mound for the Astros going for his fourth win. Look at that super earned run average against Jeff Samarja. Astros have seen him in relief before, but never as a starter. And he's coming in with a four and two record and a nice 3.00 earned run average. The old Notre Damer will go against the Astros veteran. That's a 705 start, 630 pregame Astros live tomorrow, right here. Thank you Greg and now as you see Brian LaHare at first base he's batting in the number nine spot in this double switch and the veteran right hander Sean Camp takes over on the mound with Maxwell at first Carlos Lee the batter two outs and a one one game in the sixth. Fastball slider change up from Camp he's not a hard thrower 87 88 miles an hour with the fastball. And he's got good numbers a 318 ERA he's been a, a Royal a Ray a J and now a Cub. This is his ninth major league season. Lee has hit the ball twice to second base. Quick throw to first base on Maxwell. Justin has one steal and three attempts. 
Four hundred fifty two major league appearances for Sean Camp. J.D. Martinez on deck. Carlos takes that and it's ball one. Finals in Cincinnati four Atlanta three in Cincinnati. Matt Latos going to three and two with that victory beating Brandon Beachy. He's five and two. Aroldis Chapman got saved number two. Michael Bourne hit two homers in that game to give him three. Wesley Wright working for Houston. The ball's thrown away and it trickles up the line into foul ground and Maxwell's over to second on the throwing error by Camp. Looked like the throw hit Maxwell. And then he was able to advance to second base. Why I'm bringing Camp into this game because he's a ground ball pitcher and he's thinking that uh, you know I just want to give Lee something he can lift out of this ballpark, give the Astros a two-run lead. Now he has to worry about a base hit, giving the Astros a one-run lead because of this errant pickoff attempt. Not a big lead at all by Maxwell. And Lee is one of the best this season with runners in scoring position in the National League. As much as J.D. Martinez has scuffled lately, he would be surprised they're pitching to him. Mm -hmm. With that base open now. Yeah, and we'll see what they how they how they proceed through this at bat. Carlos 292 with two outs and runners in scoring position this year. He's much better than that overall. 350 with runners in scoring position, no matter what. The number of outs in the inning. And he takes there, and they're not giving him anything to hit. It's three and oh. And making quality pitches, though, just off the edges there, trying to tantalize the big guy. Camp has not been walking many. Six walks, 19 strikeouts, and 22 and two thirds innings. Right in there for a strike. Floated that in there. Sure did. Change up at 82 miles an hour, 3 0. So Carlos knows he can't count on a, a fastball from camp. Washington beat the Phillies 5 2. Jordan Zimmerman, the winner, beating Roy Halliday. Tyler Clifford the save. Carlos tried to check his swing. They appeal at first. He went around. And it's 3 2 now. Tim Cheetah with a call. That's Carlos. He's trying not to make eye contact with Tim. <laughs> now a big 3-2 pitch and a 1-1 game in the sixth. And Camp just misses ball four. That was pretty uh, good at bat there by Carlos, and, and really interesting the way Camp worked him. And you can understand now why they didn't just put him on because Dale Swain trusting his veteran right-hander to really execute the game plan in that at bat, and he did. He made a lot of really good pitches in that sequence to Carlos. Stayed in the at bat, had a chance to get him out, but never really gave in over the heart of the plate. Everything was off the edge. Good-looking stuff. Look, look, look how he's just, just just off that outside edge throughout. Yeah, J.D. Martinez with two outs, two on is 0 for 2. Way outside ball one. J.D. is struck out looking and he's grounded out to short. Both times the count has reached 3 2 on J.D. He's hitting 237 with men in scoring position. Matt Downs is on deck. That's off the plate and it's 2 and 0. The Yankees edge Kansas City 3 to 2. Phil Hughes winning it over Luke Hochaver. Rafael Soriano got his third save. Strike 2 and 1. Mets three Pittsburgh two. That's a final from Pittsburgh. R. A. Dickey going to six and one for New York. Frank Francisco got his 11th save. 
bunch of starting pitchers having big years in the National League. Dickey had a bundle of strikeouts tonight. Slider, ball three. Three one. Baltimore beat Boston four to one. He gave in with a 2 0 fastball. But so sure I would expect one here if I were JD. Sean Camp from Fairfax, Virginia, went to George Mason University. Liner into right center field. A big hit for JD Martinez. And the Astros lead it 2 1. RBI single, JD Martinez. His 22nd run batted in, and it snaps the 1 1 tie. Well, he took the cautious approach with Carlos, and understandably that they would. Understandable that they would, but JD has a nice at bat himself. Goes down and gets this ball down below the knees, and serves it into shallow right center field. Justin Maxwell, who advanced to second on the throwing error by Camp, scores the go-ahead run. The run is earned and it's charged to Wood. In five and two-thirds innings, Wood allowed two hits, two runs, walking two, fanning three. Now Matt Downs, 170 hitter with three homers, five runs batted in. He's had 53 at bats. Came in for Chris Johnson when Chris was tossed out of the game. Chris Snyder's on deck. In the air and right center field. De Jesus back on the track. And in the sixth inning, the Astros get a run on one hit with one error. Two men left. They lead it two to one. In the booth. And by AT&T, rethink possible. Astros have taken a two to one lead as we go to the seventh. Wesley Wright on to pitch. It's up to the bullpen to hold on. Bill Brown and Jim Bechaves. Greg, the bullpen's been very sturdy for Houston with the fourth best ERA in the National League. 3.00. Wesley Wright a part of that. And his ERA is 2.45. Wilton Lopez had been warming up during the last inning when, when Hap was out there trying to finish off the six, but now Wesley Wright gets the call. A couple left handed batters to follow Darwin Barney here in the top half of the seventh inning. That's why Wesley's in this ball game. His first pitch is ball one to Barney, who's flied out twice. Jay Happ in six innings allowed the Cubs five hits, one run. He walked two and fanned six. He threw 106 pitches, 68 for strikes. 
two twenty two for Barney against lefties facing this lefty who throws him a strike. To make it one and one. Pitcher spot is due up third. For the Astros in the bottom of the inning. One hopper mad downs. One out. If you're just joining us here's a quick look back. Jay Happ on the mound he gets a strikeout on Castro and then Soriano and then there's a lead off homer in the first from Altuve. And a strikeout for Wood as he settled down. Soriano though came around in the fourth inning for the second time and homer to tie at 1 1. Chris Johnson hit a screamer tremendous play for Castro he was called out banged down the helmet was tossed out of the game by Cheetah and then the go ahead single to right center by Martinez. With two outs scoring Maxwell to make it two to one. Now Blake Lolly. And it's strike one to him he is 0 for 2. Ryan LaHare is on deck. Matter of fact three consecutive lefties in the lineup now with. Lolly eight LaHare nine and De Jesus the leadoff man. It's no balls two strikes for Wesley Wright. Another tight ball game for the Astros. They played 15 games decided by one run this year. They're seven and eight in those. And a strikeout for Wesley Wright. Two outs. Now Brian LaHare comes up. You just tell with the body language of Wesley Wright gaining confidence as he goes along this year. Really dominated left handed hitters. Went through a little stretch, oh, I don't know, about three weeks ago or so, where his command wasn't all that good, but for the most part, he's been nails. Well, Hare was 0 for 3 last night. He's been in a bit of a downturn, but his numbers for the season are outstanding. Telling it back, strike one. 100 hitter against left handed pitching, but. A home run. I guess that was the Cubs' lone home run against Southpaws coming into this game. LaHare well, has a 315 average, 10 homers, 21 runs batted in. An OPS of better than a thousand. No balls, two strikes. At age 29, an everyday player for the first time in his major league career. He had 136 at bats with Seattle in 08. But has spent nine years in the minor leagues. 39th round choice of Seattle in the 0 2 draft. Cubs signed him as a free agent. It's 1 and 2 to Brian LaHare. Couldn't miss by much. Wesley will show both the curveball and the slider, a 90 mile an hour fastball. Schaefer's in left center. James Russell, the lefties, warming up for the Cubs. Travis Wood threw 97 pitches tonight, 54 for strikes. The hair looks at it. It's strike three. A 1 2 3 7 for Wesley Wright keeps the Astros in front 2 to 1.
Move to the bottom of the seventh, and it's time for our Brown Hand Center great hands of the game. And it came back in the middle of the third when Andra Cooper, here at the ballpark, under the guise of being nominated as the military mom of the game, thought she was getting some free drinks, and her waiter turned out to be her son, Airman First Class Justin Rosner, who was home early from Afghanistan. She hadn't seen him in months. She was worried about him, and she couldn't wait to get her hands around her son and give him a big hug. That was a great moment, and that is your Brown, Hanson. Thank you, Bart. Two to one ball game. The Astros lead it. Sean Camp delivers their strike one to Chris Snyder in the home seventh inning. Twice he's fly to right. Jordan Schaefer's on deck. The pitcher spots two up third. Camp throws a strike, and it's 0 and 2. Great night for them, that reunion. He's changed clothes. Makes it a one ball, two strike count. Tampa Bay beat Toronto eight to five. Wade Davis winning that one. That's a strikeout looking. Snyder retired, one out. Chris was starting to walk before the ball got to the catcher. Yeah. We knew he had been had. Now Schaefer with Travis Buck coming out to the on deck circle but first of all Dale Swain is going to make a walk to the mound. He's been warming up his lefty James Russell and he'll go to Russell now. To make a lefty on lefty matchup. And then Buck of course. Another lefty hitter on deck but. He may not be utilized two to one Houston back in a moment. market game live online and on your favorite devices in HD quality. Visit Astros.com to order and get more details. That's MLB.tv baseball everywhere. Tomorrow is Wednesday. That means email the booth. You want a question? You want J.D. and Brownie to tangle? Well, here's your best chance to get it on. FoxSportsHouston.com. Go to the website, which you should be going to all the time anyway. Yours truly writes a column three times a week. Then link on to Fox Sports Game Connect and the point where it tells you to ask the broadcast team. That's where you put your questions. Some of them will be selected tomorrow. Pre-game show tomorrow. Don't miss it. And be part of it, too. Back to you guys. What three days a week do you write your column, Greg? Uh, usually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right. James Russell's 1-0 with a 2.08 ERA. 14 strikeouts and 10 walks for Russell. Son of Jeff Russell, former Major League pitcher. Fouled back hey. by Schaefer. Here, make a play, somebody. Yeah, it's caroming around below us. It's those numbers, uh, he's allowed two home runs this year. Both of those have been the left-handed hitters, and he's not really done a, a good job neutralizing left-handed hitters so far this year. Six out of twenty. 
Two and four seam fastball, slider and a curve. Castro's waiting for the pop up. Two outs. And now we get a uh, pinch hitter. No, we don't. It's going to be Wesley Wright staying into bat with two outs, nobody on. Because uh, De Jesus, yeah. who bats left, is leading off the eighth. So a rare at bat for Wes. He does not have an at bat this season. He has one sacrifice bunt. In a plate appearance. And Brad Mills knows that Dale's Flame doesn't have any right handed bat bats available on his bench other than Coy Hill, his backup catcher, who's a switch hitter. So he knows that Swain's hands are kind of tied. Right fouls it back. West has had 13 major league at bats with an 077 average. No balls, two strikes for Russell. Camp with two thirds of an inning, lying one hit, no runs. With a walk and a strikeout. It's one and two. The Angels got three in the first at Oakland. C.J. Wilson on the mound with that lead. Bottom of the first inning now. Texas failed to score in the first at Seattle. Matt Harrison going for the Rangers. Over the first base bag and foul. He cracked the bat on that one. He'll go back for another. So with Neftali Feliz going on the DL for the Rangers, they'll have a change in their rotation. They call up a relief pitcher. Get a little more time to figure out what they want to do with that spot in the rotation the next time it comes around. What do they have, Brownie? Feldman. They could slot Feldman in there, couldn't they? I think he's the guy, yeah. Foul ball. He hit that twice. Getting his money's worth up there. He doesn't get many <laughs> chances to swing it. He's going to hack. Wesley is a good athlete. Watch this. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Cardinals are shutting out San Diego 4 0, bottom of the seventh inning. They need a win to stay in first place by a half game on Cincinnati. It's 2 2 now for Russell against Wright. James, a 14th round draft choice in 07 by the Cubs. He was born in Cincinnati, went to the University of Texas and Navarro Junior College. He gets a strikeout to end the Astros' seven. It's two to one, Houston, moving to the eighth. Insurance report card. And we take a look at Bud Norris on the bench. Pitched another fine game last night. He is 5 and 1 with a 3.14 ERA. Six wins all of last season. This month, 
four and zero oh with a zero point three five, and he'll get one more start this month. So uh, twenty six innings and one earned run allowed so far in May for Bud. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> so he'll be up in L.A. over the weekend in that final start of the month against the Dodgers. Park to pitch in. Who's he up against? He'll go Saturday against Chad Billingsley in a 9 10 start, Houston time. Right here on FS Houston. We'll be on the air at 8 30 with that one. And then uh, Friday night, the opener, same game time. Lucas Harrell and Clayton Kershaw, Friday night. David DeJesus, and you saw his numbers against lefties, leads it off here against Wesley Wright. Probably the last man Wesley will face, we're guessing, with Reed Johnson on deck. DeJesus is one for three. And Wilton Lopez continues to uh, stay hot in the Astros pen. He likely will be next. Kershaw four and one buck ninety ERA when he takes the mound Friday night as he tries to defend his Cy Young award from last year. My goodness, he's got a good one going again this year. I bet he does. And then on Sunday it's Chris Capuano and he's having a heck of a year six and one with a two twenty five. Jay Happ draws him. Runs. Be hard to come by at Dodger Stadium as they always are, it seems. You know that. Sunday is not a scheduled television game for us. Foul ball makes it one and two. And then we get a double header in Colorado. It's a good thing we have Sunday off to rest the pipes. For Monday. That's a split double header. So there's time in between games for uh, the stadium to empty and then reopen for a separate gate for game two and then Tuesday's a day off for the Astros and they have night games Wednesday and Thursday. Swing and a miss by De Jesus who struck him out. Oh, what a job by right. They're not going to have a lot of time in Denver to, to turn that stadium over the way games last out there. The, the game times are slated five hours apart. Mm -hmm. Most games out there last three and a half four hours anyway. Just such good location on that pitch. And that's all that will be asked wow. of Wesley Wright. How about that? Four up, four down with three punch outs. In the eighth inning, here's Wilton Lopez coming in. It's Houston 2, Chicago 1. Back in a moment. Batter Johnson's 0 for 2 with a walk. Lopez is making his 24th appearance. He leads the club. Matt Downs even with the bag at third. Carlos Lee also even with the base at first. Lopez missing and it's ball one for Wilton. 20,091 return style count tonight. Tomorrow night's the finale of this homestand. The Astros are four and two so far. 
Up the middle, it hits the mound, trickles behind second. Altuve will not have a throw. It's an infield hit for Johnson. Hit number six for the Cubs. 24th appearance for Wilton Lopez tonight. That's second most in the National League. Just one behind Tim Burdak, but Burdak, one of those lefty specialists who usually comes in for just a, a third of an inning or so. So Burdak has only pitched 12 innings in his 25 appearances. Wilton Lopez has thrown 25 innings. Not that there's a relief pitcher who's thrown more innings than Wilton Lopez in the National League this year. Only that one walk you saw and. 19 strikeouts, a 209 batting average against. Tony Campana is the pinch runner for Reed Johnson. He stole a couple of bases last night, and Lopez is susceptible to the steal. Good, healthy lead there for Campana. Castro not taking a pitch to let him try to steal. He's up there hacking if Campana's. Inclined to go, he probably should go sooner rather than later to get in scoring position for Castro. Castro three for eight against Lopez. He struck out all three times tonight. I was trying to talk him out of it. Don't do it. Don't steal it. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to do that. Campana has a dozen steals. Hang out here and talk with me. Been caught twice. Oh. This one is thrown away. And Campana will go to second, and he's still going. Here's a throw to third, and Matt Downs with a tag. He's safe and gets back. Well, the ball was there, even though it was well off the base. Downs was in a position to tag him, but somehow Campana avoided the tag. Right, so how many times do you see it? A guy that can really run will get reckless on the bases, try to force the action with his speed. Campana gets lucky there. He was he was dead man running. On this play, good hustle by Carlos to track it down. He knows all about Campana's speed, so he got on it as quickly as he could. And then the dive to get over Downs, and then the dive back to the bag. Downs, he ducked it so he doesn't get kneed in the head. Yeah. Not able to apply the tag, and then Campana does. That's a great call. He got it right, boy. It looked like they had him, but he got it right. Now the infield comes in. The count of 0 and 1. High chopper going foul. Unbelievable athletic play here by Campana. Superman dive over the tag. He's like he's made out of rubber and he just bounces back in the other direction. That's amazing. Listash was holding him at second. Campana just kept on churning to third. About 15 times with the runner at third and less than two outs. Castro has delivered the runner. It's one and two. He's having a dismal night at the plate. He struck out three times. Hap got him with curveballs the first two times up and then a high fastball in the sixth inning, chasing pitches out of the strike zone all three times. Castro is the club leader for the Cubs and runs batted in with 25. Struck him out again. Golden sombrero time. Fourth strike out of the night for Castro. It looked like Castro was trying to shorten the stroke a little bit to put the ball in play, but he just got beat by an outstanding pitch. A heavy. 92 mile an hour dive bomb and sinker. What a big out. Now the infielders move back. And it's Soriano who clubbed a homer in the fourth. He's one for three. Cubs are over three as a team with runners in scoring position. They're hitting 236 for the season with men in scoring position. That strike one to Soriano. Mathers on deck. Tight ball game here. Altuve's leadoff homer in the first made it look good early, but it's a one run lead. It's that last punch out brought Jay Happ out of his chair in the clubhouse. <laughs> Big cut there. Oh, it's two. Wilton Lopez on this homestand is working for the fourth time. He pitched Thursday, Saturday, last night.
Hit foul. Six hits for the Cubs, only three for the Astros. Soriano, he's got such strong wrist. Great plate coverage. You know, he's one of those guys who knows the toes. He swings at a lot of pitches. So if you're going to go wide, go wider than wide. If you're going to go high, go way up. He struck him out on a foul tip held by Snyder. What a performance by Lopez after Campana reached third with one out. He struck out Castro, struck out Soriano. Two to one, Houston. Replay. We look back at the first batter of the game for Houston. Leading off the home first, Jose Altuve. Third pitch of the game for Travis Wood. A home run, a leadoff shot for Altuve. His third long ball of the season. 418 footer. Yeah, see, and the people around the league, you know, following the game say, oh, Altuve had a home run. Oh, he, must have, he must have yanked one into the Crawford boxes. <laughs> and then look at the video and go, oh my goodness. That was impressive. And then Lowry followed with a double, but the Astros have had one hit since then. The Martinez go ahead RBI single in the sixth. Now Altuve, who's one for three, bats here in the eighth. Hooks one, and that's a fair ball over the third base bag. It kicks out towards center field. Altuve's in with an extra base hit. A double is ninth of the year. Another multi hit game for Altuve. Especially against left handed pitching, he hits a lot of balls on the ground to the left side. See third baseman make spectacular plays on him to take away extra bases. This time he's able to squirt it down the line past Mather, who's even with the bag, maybe a step in front in anticipation of a bunt and a leadoff double for Al Tubing. Chance for a little insurance. 18th multi hit game. Lowry. Had a double in the first inning. He walked in the third, lined out to Soriano, who made a terrific sliding catch on him in the sixth. Third baseman Mathers in close. Maxwell on deck. That's ball one to Lowry. Cubs have six hits to the Astros, four each club with an error. Chicago is stranded six. Houston has left four. The Cubs will have Mather in the pitcher spot and Barney do up in the ninth. Roll to second. Barney over to first. Lowry advances Altuve to third. One out. Yeah, good job staying in the middle of the diamond there by Lowry. Certainly would have been understandable had they asked him to punt there, but he's been swinging the bat so well. I think Brad Mills wanted to give him a chance to. To drive the run in. That's just a good AB there. You get a chance to get a knock, but you don't stay up the middle. You're going to get him over to third base. And that'll force the Cubs to pull that infield in. 
Maxwell is over two with a walk. He scored the go ahead run. Carlos Lee's on deck. That's ball one. Time to get the closer ready for the ninth inning. Red Myers. Maxwell fouls it. Something came off. Either he's wearing a donut around his thumb. Let's see. Something came rolling off to the left as Myers warms up there. The count goes to one on one. Maxwell looks at a ball. Two balls and a strike. Altuve at third after his double. Astros would love some insurance. In the dirt, there's a good stop. Molly moving quickly to his left. JD mentioned earlier he is the fifth different Cubs catcher this season. This is his first major league time behind the plate tonight. He's done well. Three balls and a strike. So puts it in the air and the first baseman Lahare comes over to foul territory. Two outs. Not even Tony Campana could have tagged up and scored on that pop up. <laughs> he may have tried. Yeah, he might have. <laughs> Carlos Lee is 0 for 2 with a walk. J.D. Martinez on deck. Russell doesn't have to give in to Carlos. Russell's pitcher number three for Dale Swaim tonight. We'll see how they attack Carlos here. Last time they tiptoed around Carlos, JD Martinez made him pay by driving in the go ahead run. Behind second, Campana moving in in center to end the Astros eighth. No runs a hit, a runner stranded at third, moving to the ninth. It's Houston two, Chicago one.
life-saving car insurance quote, call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE today. Well, the king of the regulators has taken the hill. You can see him on the screen. Bill Brown, Fred Myers, is there. He's tied for third in saves in the National League with 10. Myers off to a fantastic start this season. 10 of 11 in saves at 1.93 ERA. That league hitting just 184 against him. He's getting, he's getting a lot more outs on the ground than he normally does. Obviously, when you're pitching these late game situations and tight games, that's a good idea. Keep the ball out of the air. Home run ball has been an issue for Brett in the past in his career, but this year he's doing a much better job inducing ground balls. Joe Mather leads off, making strike one. He has a single and a walk tonight. Punches one foul and out of play. Right, so strike one there to get things started with a breaking ball. And you see that almost every time he comes into the game, he gets the jump on these hitters. They're up there geared up for fastballs. He drops a breaking ball in to get get the jump on him. 72% of the time he's throwing first pitch strikes. That's way above average. Swing and a miss. Out number one. 12 punch outs for Astros pitchers tonight. Six of the last seven batters that have come up for the Cubs have struck out. Now the pinch hitter is lefty hitting Adrian Cardenas. Batting for the pitcher Russell. Cardenas started last night at second base. He takes the curve for ball one. And he was two for four with a pair of doubles last night. Evens the count. One ball, one strike. Wilton Lopez at two thirds of an inning allowed one hit, no runs, with no walks. He struck out two. Pressure pitching with Castro and Soriano striking out with a runner at third. Now it's a one ball, two strike count. Cardenas has three major league hits, all of them doubles in 19 at bats. He's 0 for 6 pinch hitting. Third ball got him. That's four strikeouts in a row now. Myers one out away from save number 11. It was BJ Hap's fourth win. Cardin is just flailing at that curveball. Darwin Barney is two for 14 against Brett Myers in his career. 0 for 3 tonight. Strike to Barney. Carlos blocks it and goes to the bag. And the Astros hold off the Cubs two to one to make it a five and two homestand. Myers getting save number 11 and going to four and three with a win. Very unusual game. Altuve with a leadoff homer and then the go ahead hit by Martinez in the sixth. That holds up. Astros two, Cubs one.